In today's lesson, I'm going to show you three very common situations on a table which are applicable for 8-ball, 9-ball and 10-ball. And for each situation, I have three possible solutions. And also make sure to stick to the end because in this video, you can win this cue. In our first situation, we're playing 9-ball and we have to get from the 8-ball to the 9-ball. And remember, this shot is applicable for 8-ball, 9-ball and 10-ball, of course. The first option that I'm going to show you is we're going to play a high ball with inside spin, trying to just go one rail from the short rail to this side of the 9-ball and in the best case end here with a straight in shot on the 9-ball. I don't really like that shot because we're using inside spin and inside spin makes the shot missable a bit more difficult to control the exact path of the cue ball and speed control also gets more difficult but it is an option that's why I'm going to show it to you now. So we're going to play a high ball of course and we're going to use some inside spin. And you can see we have a really nice line, but I definitely overhit the shot here. And this is just because inside spin gets way more uncontrollable. We have kind of a shot into the side pocket, but this was pure luck. That's why I'm going to show you the next option, which I like a bit better, but it's not my favorite option. I'm going to show you my favorite option afterwards. This time we're just going to use a high ball and don't use any spin on the cue ball. This time we're just trying to go from this rail towards this side of the 9-ball and again end with a straight in shot on a 9-ball. So the good news here is we don't have to use any spin which makes it a bit more uh, easy for beginners. So no spin, bit above center and the right speed again. Cue ball goes a nice line and we have a pretty nice shot on the 9-ball but the cue ball is here, we're straight in, but if we're hitting a bit too hard again, you can see we have a really difficult shot on a 9-ball. That's why I don't really like that shot. So I'm going to show you my favorite option now with the 6-ball here. And this time we're going to use outside spin and outside spin won't harm your shot making, of course. So this time we're just trying to get into the short rail again, but now we're trying to use the second long rail here and then we're going nicely towards the 9 of the 9-ball and that way this shot is a lot less speed sensitive. So let's show you how this would look. Let's say we want to hit the rail. Well, right about here would be perfect. And of course, make sure to not flirt with the side pocket. So if you're not sure where you're exactly hitting the rail, then make sure to be a bit more on this side here. But I'm pretty confident with my speed, uh, my cue ball control, so I'm trying to hit the rail right about here. Okay, let's see how this would look. And we hit the perfect spot on the rail and the cue ball goes nicely into the line of the 9-ball and that way we definitely have a very makeable shot. Alright, let's have a look at the next situation. In our next situation, we're playing 10-ball and this time we have to get from the 9-ball to the 10-ball. The only problem here is that we're a bit off angle and the cue ball will go into this direction after we're making the 9-ball. I'm going to show you three options. The first option is the simplest. All you have to do is cheat the pocket to the right and roll the 9-ball in very softly. I also like to use a touch of right spin, that way I can aim a bit fuller. And you can see that way we definitely have a makeable shot on the 10 ball. However, it's not the easiest shot in the world, but you will definitely have one. If you don't feel comfortable with this shot, I'm going to show you two more options. The next option we have is if you're setting the 8 up, trying to get um, a couple of rails around the table with high and right spin, trying to hit that rail. Go towards here, towards there, and then end up in the best case, um, let's say, on this point on the table. The only problem here is this shot is very speed sensitive. So if the cue ball comes from here and ends a bit too short, you will still have not the best shot on the 10 ball. And if you even get a bit further and the cue ball ends here, then you definitely have a horrible shot on the 10 ball. So let's show you how this would look with high and right spin and make sure to follow through the cue ball nicely.
And you can see this was pretty much a pinpoint position. But again, remember, this shot is very speed sensitive. So let's show you one more shot, which you can also do. This time, we're going to use the seven ball to get to the 10 ball. And we're not using this rail this time. Instead, we're going to stun the cue ball, tiny bit of draw, bringing the cue ball towards here, towards that rail. And then in the best case, go towards the 10 ball. This shot is nice because you can go actually into the line of the 10 ball, but it's not very easy to execute. So let's see where I can bring the cue ball. My goal is to bring the cue ball this case towards here, but you will see that uh, this is not very easy to execute. So a bit below center, touch of right spin, trying to go two rails. And the cue ball goes perfectly towards the chalk on the table, a bit too soft, but still this is a very nice shot. So I personally would prefer the shot where we just have to roll the nine ball in and have a bit of a longer shot, but I'm a pretty good shot maker, so I like this option. I would recommend um, to either use that one that we just played if you want to make sure to go towards the line, but the easiest to execute with the high right is going this path that we played there at the second. A variation but again remember this shot is very speed sensitive in the next situation we're playing eight ball and we are currently on stripes this means we have to make the 11 ball and get position for the eight ball into the side pocket because our opponent solid is blocking the corner pocket the first option we have is just to go one rail from here to the center of the table in the best case end up here by playing it with inside spin but i would never recommend to play inside spin on this shot because it definitely makes this shot missable and speed control gets also more difficult but i'm going to show it to you nevertheless so here center ball bit above center actually and a ton of inside spin cue ball needed to stop here and well we have kind of a shot on the eight ball but i really don't want to have this shot in a hill hill match or something like that because it definitely becomes missable because of the position of the eight ball if the eight ball is here right in front of the pocket then it's no problem but on this kind of shot i want to be right about here to have the easiest as possible shot on the eight ball let's show you my second favorite option and afterwards i'm going to show you my favorite option so this time we're going to use left spin and we're just supporting the natural roll of the cue ball by going from here to what's here and end up here with a nice shot on the eight ball so again bit above center and use left spin on the cue ball and this is pretty much perfect we have a nice shot on the eight ball so this is definitely a shot i would recommend but there is one more shot that looks pretty fancy but actually is very reliable all we have to do is to play basically the same shot that we just played but this time we're going to use this rail as well and that rail and then the cue ball should go nicely towards the eight ball so for example if there are blocking balls on a table maybe there is another ball then you don't want to play this two rail position where you end here because you can snooker yourself behind that seven ball so if the balls are for something uh, for example like that then i would definitely go this route here so low and left spin again hit hard and the self-correcting angles and rails will help you to get nicely towards the eight ball And you can see we have a nice line and we definitely don't risk ending behind that seven ball. Don't turn off yet, I promised you in this video you can win this queue because we just reached 200,000 subscribers on YouTube which is amazing. So today's bonus clip from Instagram is about this queue and after the bonus clip I'm going to explain you how you can participate in the raffle. To celebrate 200,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, Mass Cues and I decided to do a giveaway. This means you can win my playing cue, the Mass EC9 CMN2 Limited Edition cue with a 12.2 Ignite shaft and also the Exceed 4 inch extender is included. Once I'm reaching 200k subscribers, just go to my YouTube channel to participate and if you win the cue, you might be able to play shots like this.
All right, guys, you saw this is an amazing queue, and of course, you don't get mine, but you get it brand new. And all you have to do to participate in the raffle is make sure you are a subscriber of mine with the bell notification, and then just leave a thumbs up on this video and comment under the video. And then in one month from now, you will know how you can win this queue. All right, guys, anyways, if you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. A huge thank you to my sponsors, especially MassQs for providing this queue. And that's it for today. So thanks for watching, guys. And as always, see you at the next lesson. Take care. So a huge thank you to every single one of you who subscribed to my channel. <laughs> ah, we just reached 200,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is amazing. I not subscribers. Just reached 200,000 subscribers on YouTube and because of what 200, 200,000, 200,000, 200,000. 200,000. Ich sag's einfach ganz schnell, vielleicht fällt's nicht auf. 200,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is ich hab schon wieder dein Lachen in deinen Augen sing. Don't turn off yet. I think ja, it's kann doch nicht sein. Egal. This video you can win this cube because I guess. <laughs>